Nitrox and Fatigue by Dr. Matthias Nechetto, performed by Dr. Franz Cronier. In this podcast, we investigate the correlation between diving with either air or nitrox and the incidence of fatigue, especially since divers often report feeling less tired after diving with nitrox. For decades, compressed air has been the standard and most widely used breathing mix in recreational diving. So breathing mixtures with lower nitrogen and higher oxygen, also called enriched air nitrox, has gained popularity amongst divers, especially those looking to increase their bottom times or reduce their decompression stress for typical duration dives and depths. Today, some 25 years of nitrox use in recreational diving has brought a lot of operational experience for both divers and scientists who dive. But some divers have also made the observation that science doesn't necessarily prove, and that is that they feel less tired after diving on nitrox. So our question is whether there's solid evidence to support this observation, and if so, what the possible scientific explanation would be for this phenomenon. Tiredness or physical fatigue is a physiological consequence of exertion. It's a characteristically subjective feeling of a reduced capacity to perform ordinary physical activities. It's often associated with sleepiness or lethargy and suboptimal cognitive performance. Fatigue is not uncommon, even following inconsequential dives where decompression sickness would not be suspected. It is, however, also a frequently reported symptom of decompression sickness. And so there's a lot of controversy that surrounds these subjective feelings of fatigue following air dives relative to nitrox. Contrary to these perceptions and uh, almost urban legends, objective studies have not found reliable differences in fatigue and cognitive performance following dives on air versus nitrox.
be a reason why divers might feel tired after diving. It really is the equivalent of mild shock and it translates to the loss of almost a unit of blood as might be experienced during blood donation. So people should remember that fatigue may be the result of immersion as such, independent of depth and decompression stress. Is there any reliable data available to support claims that nitrox causes less post-dive tiredness than air does? Dr. Harris. No, there isn't. Uh, three peer-reviewed articles contribute evidence to the nitrox and fatigue question, but I'm not personally convinced that the size and power of any of them have been able to address the problem comprehensively. Dr. Pollock. The data supporting these claims are not compelling. This is not surprising since PO2 increases substantially in response to depth alone. However, there is no reason to argue over whether a person feels less fatigued. Research has shown a placebo effect has physiological impact. So why not let the diver enjoy the sense? The important thing is for divers to stay within decompression limits and to observe oxygen toxicity limits. Since nitrox's higher oxygen content seems to cause increased oxidative stress, how would one reconcile these apparently counterintuitive effects of nitrox? Dr. Harris. There's an interesting comment from Pierre Lefebvre's article that oxidative stress can inhibit neuronal activity, as with alcohol, for example. And this effect on inhibitory neurons can actually increase a person's arousal levels. On a personal note, my teammates and I have felt very good after 8 to 17 hour cave dives in 6 degrees water and maximum depths of more than 200 meters. Considering the thermal, decompression, physical, oxidative and psychological stresses we endure, how would we reconcile this? Well, maybe we're just happy to be alive. But I also felt dreadful, tired and chesty after shallower dives with lower oxygen exposures run over shorter periods in warm water. The point is there are just too many variables to consistently detect a difference just as a simple result of gas change. Dr. Pollock. Oxidative stress certainly has the potential to be problematic, but probably far less so than with typically short exposures, which are associated with most recreational diving. As usual, further research is required to assess the physiological impact. Would you consider tiredness or fatigue to be a sign of subclinical decompression sickness? Dr. Harris. I believe that fatigue can be a symptom of decompression sickness, but it needs to be something marked to impress me. Severe fatigue, such as feeling like you have the flu, rather than just being a little bit more tired than usual, is more likely to be serious. Rather than to use a subclinical decompression sickness diagnosis, which I don't really favor, I would call it fatigue DCS if it's part of a constellation of symptoms. Dr. Pollock. Normal patterns of post-dive tiredness don't qualify but unusual fatigue, which is markedly in excess of typical levels, could be a sign and more likely be decompression sickness. Having the diver describe the nature and degree of the effect is important to help distinguish between, let's call it normal fatigue and unusual fatigue. Despite the common impression that diving on nitrox may cause less fatigue than performing the same dive using air, scientific research to date simply hasn't found solid evidence to support that assumption. As mentioned previously, the placebo effect should not be underestimated and it certainly hasn't been fully studied. Regardless of what questions future research on this front might answer, it's still appropriate to promote wise use of oxygen-enriched mixtures, not necessarily as a way to extend bottom times, but as a way to help minimize decompression stress. If diving with nitrox makes you feel less tired after your day of diving, whether you have scientific support of your experience or not, feel free to use it. Just make sure you enjoy it safely. Nitrox safety tips. Whenever you plan to use nitrox, make sure you plan your dive with a clear view of your goals. Using nitrox means juggling between three possible benefits. Extending bottom times, reducing surface intervals, or reducing decompression stress. Whichever benefit you choose to pursue, remember to be respectful of the increased risk of oxygen toxicity. If you choose to minimize decompression stress, you should not 
count on longer dives or shorter surface intervals. If you want longer dives, your decompression stress may not be reduced and your surface intervals should really not be made any shorter. Note that decompression stress of diving with nitrox to its no decompression limit is still comparable to diving air to its no decompression limit. The decompression benefit provided by nitrox may not be sufficient if surface intervals are too short. By increasing the oxygen fraction, it reduces the depth at which oxygen toxicity can occur and one should never exceed the maximum operating depth or the MOD for the mixture. We hope that you've enjoyed this podcast and will continue to enjoy diving, whether on air or nitrox.